All right, the gas gauge seems to be working pretty good. Yeah, it's actually got seven gallons in it. It's, it's gonna go all the way up once it's full, I think, but I'm not sure. It's, it doesn't matter if it goes all the way up as long as it empties at a space where you know where it is. Talk to you later in the video. All right, guys, let's put a gas tank sending unit in this. I'm going to, I've already done it once, but, you know, I, apparently what happened is the gas got old that was in there, so it probably got coated with some old gas, and, you know, or the fumes from it got it, like, rusty or something, so it stopped working because it didn't fill it up with gas right away after I got it running. So anyway, what the requirement for this is to pull the engine. So it doesn't take very long to do. So basically I do it for ease of operation. I go ahead and remove this back piece here and it just makes it so much easier on a bus to pull it. You can do it without it, but it's like pulling it on a bug. Same thing. Now I can maybe, I might want to leave these hoses on when I do it. You know, I do have to remove the air cleaner on this thing, so that's always in the way on the bus. But other than that, there's just four bolts and a few throttle cable, fuel line, and some wiring to remove, and that's about it. So it should come right out, and we'll, then we got to get the gas tank removed. Or this one I can actually do in place, but. Um, on this one, I'm going to put a bug one in, and it has a bug one in it. I usually have better luck with these, so they're cheaper, and they work on the same bolt pattern as the bus. And on this one, on the 67, I think it actually is clocked in the in the right direction. Uh, typically, what I'll do is I'll just bend this arm to make it so that it doesn't rub against the side of the tank. I'm certain it isn't doing that. I think it's we checked it pretty good before we put it in. And for some reason it worked before I put it in we tested it but after I got it in there for some reason that sat for about a year with some old gas in it and then probably just got coated inside there and that's all it takes so let's get it out of here and take a look All right, so we got the gas, the uh, center out. Um, it was actually not the center that was bad, but it did have some little bit of gas inside of it, so that's no good. I went ahead and replaced it anyway. They're not expensive. Now, some of you guys are going to go, well, why don't you use the VW bus one? Because the bus one's the cylinder type. 
I've had so many of those that didn't work and were so far off on the gas. You, you just they just don't work. You get one that works right, then you and it's fine, and you and then you check it with your gauge. You know you have to check everything. The parts quality is awful. I don't care where you get it from. You can go spend the most highest dollar you can spend, and you're still going to have issues. With these, see how I can I bent that rod? You can bend the rod to get it to work. And on a bus, uh, most of them, this is a 67, so that's got the bigger gas tank, the little hump in the middle. And the 67 has uh, a different clocking for this thing than the other. So the 67 sits in there about like that. Now, I don't know, it might have been hitting the other side of the gas tank. It didn't seem like it would, but I bent it. I'll show you what I did. I just bent the rod like that, if you can see. I bent the rod a little bit so that it was, because it goes in about like that, okay? With these two going in the back. That would, this would, where my thumb is would be the center. So I bent the rod that way, and I also bent it down a little bit. Now what's going to happen is it's going to bump the bottom of the gas tank. So you got to do the homework. You got to take it out. You got to take the turn the key on. What I did is I isolated my wires so nothing would ground. So I'm not going to have a fire because you know all you got to have is a spark when you're playing with the gas, right? So I kind of use this little thing here to hold my wires so they don't touch anything. So and I hook up the battery cable. I hook up the the thing here. I take a, took a stick, dropped it down in the gas tank, checked it was about halfway full, so that I wanted to see how much I had to I had to empty some out just because I didn't want to have you know because it'll actually it'll fill up above the top of this because of that hump section there, so I didn't want to do that. So then I found out that it goes to the R about right there and it can go all the way down to there okay but it runs out about right there at Z, it's at it's at R okay reserve so the float would you want the float to be hitting the bottom of the tank somewhere around where it's at reserve because even though it's hitting the bottom of the tank it just doesn't have enough fuel in there to float right so it's gonna you know it may not be you're not gonna get it exact okay that's all I'm saying but you'll get it a lot closer with one of these than you do with the other one because you can't do any adjustment on the other one it's just if they didn't put the right resistor wire in there and all that you could try playing with resistors and all kinds of garbage and you're probably still gonna have it wrong and then you're gonna run out of gas sometime you're gonna be frustrated so but you can take this and bend it all kinds of ways so literally if you're going to do this job you're going to be prepared to empty your gas tank out and fill it back up and to do that efficiently you get one of these from harbor freight tools or 12 bucks or something it's a pump to pump gas in because it's a real pain to pour gas in your gas to fill it up this thing does it super nice and easy so now let's see where she ends up with i think i've got a couple gallons short of full so it's not quite going all the way up, but it's probably not going to go all the way to one to one. I think the gauge itself, um, you got to check your, take, hook up the setting unit and run it all the way up and then see if it even goes all the way to one to one. Some of the gauges read off. So there's gauge problems. You got center problems. You just got to get back there and just start bending the rod, play with it, fill it up. And take the thing back out again leave the engine kind of sitting there and leave the tank in it just what's what's nice about these these kind of senders are half the price of the correct one and you can play with it to make it work right so it's much better way to go and you can take it out with the tank still in so I'm reaching up in there right now and I just reach back in there weasel that sucker out 
bend the rod a little bit, drain the fuel out, fill it back up, make sure it's it's going to be off a little bit, but at least it'll be pretty close to where it you can work with it. You're not looking for a hundred percent, but I literally I've been ten percent or fifteen percent with the, one of the original ones. Um, I can get these to about seventy five percent. One of my buses is a perfect. It's a hundred. It's like it runs out right at the bottom, and you know, and right at the R, and it fills up right to the full mark. But it has a regular VDO gauge, not one of these aftermarket made by whatever, Wolfsburg West or ISP West, whoever's, you know, they're made by the same people, just so you know. <laughs> people go, oh, well, okay, I got the one from ISP. It was better than the one from Wolfsburg. It's like, uh, they were made on the same run, guys, just so you know, okay? They just labeled them different. Don't ask me how I know that. I just do. So, not telling <laughs> so anyway they got so it runs out about right here on this okay not all the way down so you got to check it and see where yours runs out at and then figure okay that's got to be at the bottom of the tank at that point and then so you kind of want the place where it runs out to be the you know the closest i guess you know, it's okay to have a gallon or two reserve, I think. But you kind of want it to hit the woods and then right about that point be out of gas. Where if it's full for too long, that's fine. So that's why I bent this one down a little bit. I bent it down just a little bit like that. Put it back in there. Check it. And then just fill it up with gas. I'll tell you, these things are really cool. Pouring gas sucks, especially in a bus really hard to do so i'm going to fill it up pretty full and then i'll check the gauge again we'll take a look at it just kind of giving you guys the idea of what i'm doing so right here i'm a hundred percent full i tweaked it downward so it should go all the way up and it's still not going all the way to a hundred percent so i think the rest is the sender like i said you, you never get them to work exactly right I, I tell you, I've had, I've had a bunch of them. I get every once in a while, I'll get a bus that I've done and I put a sender in it and the gauge is original and the sender is like a video original and it works nice. It work goes all the way up, but 99% of the time, nope, they're always reading off. Um, it's just the way it is. So anyway, you just want to know where it's full and you want to know where it's empty. So. And if, and if it's in the ballpark of that, then you're fine. But that's the way that I do it with these. And like I said, if you use the one, the canister one, it's, I've had them, I put a brand new one in and I filled it up and I wasn't even to quarter of a tank and then, and then, uh, it goes down to reserve and then I still got like five gallons left. It's really hard to figure out how much fuel you have in your bus when you have it that far off. Okay. That's how some of those original ones are the original replacement ones. I've that's how, and you can't do any adjustment to them, but when you have these, you can actually play with the rod and kind of get it close. I don't know, maybe I could get a little bit more out of it. Maybe it's actually, so if you see here, I've got it bent about like that. So this thing sunk that far down because I checked it. I checked the gauge itself when, when it's right here, it's right at one to one. When it's, if you look right here, get you guys up so you can see. If you get to right there, it's right at one to one when I checked it with a good ground and everything. So now it's right, uh, maybe about right there. So it's kind of weird then, and, and I, have, I bent it about exactly the same as this one. Let's back you up so you can see. I'm trying to look at this and look at the camera. So if you see, technically, it shouldn't be hitting the top of the tank first, but you know, 
and then you want it to run out right about down here because it runs out about right in this angle right here it's at it's at r right there not here if you go all the way to here it doesn't matter it's still at r if you go to here or right about there it's at r so you you kind of like i said you got to take it out and just figure it out and kind of go okay so if it runs out when it's right there okay or it's hitting the bottom of the tank when it's there um and it's all the way up here when it's up that's going to give me that much range and then when it's at the bottom of the tank or maybe it won't be you'll have a couple of gallons left and there's no way to make it so that it has more <laughs> i don't know if you know what i mean so if i bend it up or down a little bit more it's going to run out sooner right so anyway it's going to run out as far as the gauge goes but it'll still have fuel left i don't know you got to play with it and just kind of figure it out that way that's the way you do it but at least like i said with this you can with the uh, with the other one there's no adjustment it's just it's a float that goes straight up and down and there's no way to add or make it better or not this you can at least you can bend the rod so anyway kind of give you the idea so you can figure it out on your own i'll talk to you guys on the next video please like share and subscribe you can see how you get the gas tank it's no fun just gotta pull the motor it doesn't take very long it depends on the kind of motor you got if you got a you know coolers and all that stuff it takes a lot more time this one's not hard to do so all right i'll talk to you in the next video please like share and subscribe